Hello again, I'm on Stoke with Mastermind Games, back for more of uh, Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress and the Chaos Ogren. So first, let's see here, it's gonna be tricky. Alright, I'm just gonna have to do it twice. So chaotic red. Now again part of the same group that the traitor commissar came from. The Chaos Ogre is obviously favored by the Dark Gods, if for no other reason visible by no other reason than the fact that he's got that nice big crab claw. Now he had an alternate head as well, but I chose the one with the respirator because it also has these neat looking tusks coming off of it. So I'm going to do a little wet on wet here and do the crab claw. And see if I can't uh, blend that in to the flesh tone. I'm using the rest of him. That flesh tone being tanned skin 09044, which just went flying. So I'm going to do the skin on the rest of the body first and see if I can't. Um, yeah, so I'm using just enough water to keep the to thin the paint. And this chaos icon is actually impaled through his body. But from what I understand, most ogren are so dense normally they wouldn't even notice anyway, and this is one of the chaos corrupted varieties, so Ogren being one of the various species, subspecies of abhuman, which, for those of you not familiar with, are, are um, human offshoots. They are generally despised by the Imperium as a whole, but some types, like normal Ogren, are permitted to serve in the Imperial Guard because they are useful. In the case of the Ogren, they're stronger than a space marine, and even tougher, but uh, they're not too bright and rarely have the mental acuity of... average have the mental acuity of a five-year-old. Which kind of makes it all the more horrible that they're essentially sending beings with the intellect of children into combat. Oh no. Soak up my brush a bit and bring this out a little more than usual and just kind of glaze that over and then get back to the same thing with that chaotic red. And can I do the same thing? And well, we will see what that looks like when it's dry. And I'm going to let that set for a bit. There's one more little bit I can do. Uniform gray. Just a little dot of it. Because this skull on the base happens to have a couple little rocks around it, so just get those. And alright. Let that dry and move on in a bit. I was hoping that would work better, but it really isn't. <sighs> All right. I think I'm going to have a very limited window to work here because there is a bad thunderstorm going on outside. So chaotic red again. So the blending on the crab claw arm here, if I can get it to focus, worked pretty well, I think. Not quite one, not quite the other. Definitely looks like it uh, is transitioning into something else. Or is still on fighting. It looked a little better there for a second, but, but every time I change position, it uh, goes back to something else. So I'm going to get the pants. And I 
I want to get this cable here. And the hose going from the rebreather to this canister. Holy cow, that one was loud. Might have even been audible. I've never had a storm related problem with blackouts at my current home. In fact, the only time I ever had a power outage here was uh, when they were doing construction across the street and wound up knocking out a power line. But. One more thing I want to get in this color is this bandage on the arm. That's way too thick. Okay. The rest of the cloth will be in a different color. But before I uh, stop here, 09143 yellow bone. Switch to a smaller brush for this. Using just enough water to thin the paint. It's going to go on the skull and the base, obviously. And then, then the tusks, which these could hypothetically be part of the mask, but I think they're grown out of his face. And like I said, he's already probably very favored by the Dark Gods just based on the Crab Claw alone, so why not have him uh, a few more mutations? Alright. That's all I'm going to do right this minute. I want to let this dry first and finish up the cloth before I move on to some of the metal and weaponry. So, come back in a little bit here. Oh boy, that... I will figure this poor thing out. I will. It's just... I keep requiring more experimentation and more time. Okay. We'll see if this works a little better. All these now I've lost track. Dark Elf skins are on one six four. Hmm. Okay, I need a longer brush for that. the rest of the cloth. Now the front here is an armored plate, so what would that be? Well, I think I got this fixed, I find another problem. Well, just keep at it, keep experimenting until I get it right. That's about all I can do. I didn't get it anywhere I didn't want it. I think this particular brush might be just about shot. But that's alright, I've got a new pack ready. All that cloth. Oh, I 
think I made it worse trying to make it better. So try something new on the next take, but that's got the last of the cloth. Let's draw as I can do the uh, metal end wrap on the base coats. Okay, still playing around with this whole focus thing. I'll get it eventually. Now, okay. Tarnished steel 09206. I don't know why I have so much trouble with that word. It's beyond me why, but whatever. Tarnished. See, I don't. I don't know why I can't say tarnished. And when I'm saying steel, tarnish, tarnished steel. I, Whatever, I'm starting to ramble. Let's uh, take care of this before. <laughs> this gets weird. So this looks like it's actually bolted to his face. I'll do this in metal. And the pauldron. Yeah. Get this part of it first. And this is at least partially anchored to his body. Chaos. <laughs> Exemplars of extreme body piercing. Especially since the uh, iconography is literally pierced through this Ogren's flesh. as well. Uh, brings to mind the movie Hellraiser. Another 80s horror movie series where, uh, well, the first is pretty good, the second is alright. Third and Beyond is like many series where it gets uh, weird. Okay. Okay, I'm going to say that these spikes are also uh, metal embedded into his flesh. I see the chainmail there. I'm going to get it in this color as well, but I want to finish the eight pointed star of chaos here first. Let's get this uh, chainmail now. And here on the club, let's do the hilt and the generator. Oh, you know what? I am just going to do the whole thing in the uh, steel, and that'll be fine. Looks like it was meant to be made out of an I beam anyway. Improvised uh, mall. I believe it's supposed to be a power weapon, but I'm not certain. Have to double check what the uh, stats for Warhammer 40,000 say. And yes, you can take the Traitor Commissar Chaos Ogre and all the other models that originated in Blackstone Fortress in a regular game of Warhammer 40,000, though some are going to be more difficult to work in than others. I did double check some of the rules, and it looks like taking unaligned units really doesn't affect anything. But they would likely have to be in a uh, auxiliary detachment all their own. But some of the chaos boys are even actually meant to go with Obsidious Malix. Oh, he's himself a standard chaos lord. 
In fact, he's the only one of these uh, models that really dies separately as a straight up chaos lord with a power hammer or thunder hammer. Stormy Grey is 0908. Want a little bit of this on here. I was originally going to do part of the bludgeon in this, but I at least want to get the uh, tank here. Is it oxygen? Uh, maybe. Is it narcotics? Maybe. We don't know. For all we know, this thing could be full of laughing gas. Okay. Well, that gets base coat, so I'm going to let that all dry completely and start shading. That crowd claw really turned out nice. All right, time to shade, and the first one on that is going to be. So actually, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, black and steel 09205. And we'll do a little bit of uh, just blending here. I'm going to get the generator portion of the uh, mall. And just. Well, okay, so two things I guess I'll get in this black and steel. Gonna get the respirator mask, because that's something you'll probably want to keep in good condition. And then a little bit on the inside here, and mostly up to the uh, handle on this. good there. And then Scorched Metal 09125 to give a rusty look to the rest. For all these are improvised weapons. And well, hygiene isn't seemingly a thing amongst chaos in general. Now just a little more. I'm thinning with one part uh, water, one part paint on most of these. I'm so used to just doing it, I forgot to mention that. Now this one combined with the highlights I'm going to use will help to sell an illusion that this is rusty metal. Which now raises the question, does this uh, Chaos Ogren have tetanus? He's probably the embodiment of tetanus. Alright. Then, going along the rest of the mall here. I'm going to try to get some in the channel. And again, this is improvised weaponry, so very well could have been made out of an I-beam left over from a construction site, or more likely stolen from a construction site. And I think I can go ahead and do the tusks and skull as well, so stained ivory 0914. Boy, it's trying to focus on the crowd claw, but it's not really working too well. Back it up a bit. It looks like a little bit of the uh, metal there got on. You know what? I can work with that. Just gonna dab this onto this skull sitting on the ground here.
tusks. And I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry for a bit. So I'll come back in a little while. Okay, oh boy. Frame drop. So we can get this to focus at least a little bit. Maybe, please, focus. There we go. There's a little bit of focus falling, oh boy. Alright. Next. Red Brick 09001. Gonna use this twice here. You can use it on its own to shade the clothing, and then I'll be blending it with a flesh tone for the crab claw. But that'll come a little later. The flesh tone will be the last thing I shade. It's gonna be a few lighting effects, specifically on the uh, improvised mall. I forgot to put something on the belt buckle, okay. So I do this shade and I can fix that real quick. A little tarnished steel 09206. Tarnished steel. I'm just gonna have to enunciate both words to say it right. Yes, I don't know why I have so much trouble with those two. Whatever. Not particularly relevant. So, a little bit of that on the buckle, and then I'll. Give it a quick shade, probably black and steel in a minute. All right, let that old dry. I'll touch up that belt buckle. Um, one more thing I can do is take Stormy Gray 09088 and get the rocks uh, that that skull is resting on. I'll just thin that into a wash. Real quick, just dab that on there. Okay. Move on as soon as this uh, dries up. I think I'm making this worse. Alright. I did nick the uh, belt buckle with a little scorched metal, just like on the armor. Next. Okay. Dark Elf Shadow 09163. Switch to a larger brush for this, I think. Yeah, that'll work. Of course, I could have done this with a smaller brush too, but it would have taken a bit longer. Just uh, use the right tool for the job.
This is one of the push fit models. And uh, I gotta say, I don't particularly like the push fit because sometimes they don't fit all that great. This gap here in the shoulder is a case in point. So, that's just gonna leave the flesh tones. And I can move on to highlighting and detailing. So, uh, one thing I can do though is prep the lighting effect actually. So, let's do that real quick here with matte white. And then go back to that smaller detail brush I was using a minute ago. Now here I'm using just enough water to thin the paint. Actually it'll go a little thinner than that. Not quite a one-to-one uh, -one ratio though. We've got a little more paint than water here. Just want to fill in this generator back here. If it goes uh, past the boundary, that's fine. It'll help sell the illusion that it's glowing. Of course, there's someone on Warhammer Community who's been highlighted for actually installing LED lights in his uh, Crimson Fist Space Marines, so uh, that's one way to do it. A very impressive way to do it, in fact. All right. Yep, a little dab there. Let that dry completely. Might use the last skin tone and do the uh, lighting effect. Still fighting this for. I'm just gonna have to keep experimenting and playing around until I get it right. All right. Now for shading and lighting effects, or the last layer, shading the skin tone. Tanned skin zero nine zero four four. Or no, no, not space out. Tanned shadow zero nine zero four three. I'm getting a little mixed up there. It's been a long day. It's really hot. I need to just. Uh, Brush might break soon. Just uh, this is a smaller one. And I want to start kind of here on the crab claw arm. And I'm not going all the way down, you'll notice, because I want the claw portion to be a slightly different color. But I need to do this fairly quickly so I have time to kind of blend my shading. You don't always want to do wet on wet effects, but uh, they can be impressive when you decide to do them. It's completely up to you when you want to try. Just keep in mind your colors will end up different when you're doing wet on wet. Uh oh. The uh, canister a little bit. Let's uh, absorb that with the paper towel. That's why I have it. Okay. Got a little over enthusiastic, I suppose. So, since uh, I've got this uh, screwy assemblage here, let's we'll see if I can. Uh, do something that makes it work a little better. Alright, that takes care of the bulk of the flesh. Now, Vampire Red. Give me my lighting effect in addition to my last shade. Oh, come on, focus. Please focus on this. Okay, there we go. Let's hope this is the system mate. And as soon as I get it, I lose it. All right. I'm just going to have to keep experimenting until I get this right, and that's all there is to it. This is very frustrating, but all I can do is keep trying until I get it right. Thinning this one out with two to three parts water to one part paint for the lighting effect. So I'm going to inside the, this hateful chaos right inside the power plant along the rod. Yeah. 
in like that. Extend that into the high beam just a little, not too terribly much. Now, I'm gonna kind of drizzle this along this chasm here, see if I can make it look like it's uh, interrupting with light, and you'll see the. Well, I guess I'm making it look like glue, that works too. Tense out a little more. I'm gonna get this on the claw now. And it's keeping this very thin more so than usual. Actually, it's the wrong uh, shade for the claw, but I'm gonna roll with it. A little of this on the face. Not even the entire face, just part of it. Red brick 09001, that's what I was intending to use in the crab claw. But what I've done will still, I think, work a little. Thin it out real well. Uh oh, flying brush. So I now have three colors on this thing. We're just going to let them all jumble up together to get this nice disturbing effect of a hideous mutation of what was once a normal ab human. And that I think works out okay. Got my uh alright. That's it for the shading and the lighting. Gonna let this dry completely. And then highlight. Oh, and I dropped 65 grams. Good gravy. That's if I have enough problems for you already. Alright. Let this dry back in a minute. Okay. Time to detail and highlight. Matt White. You know what? I got a different idea on this one. Matt Black, actually. So since he is obviously favored by the Pantheon, as the word bearers call the Chaos Gods, I'm going to give this Chaos Ogre in just dead black eyes. So I'm going to very carefully fill those in. Start with Vampire Red. Let's see if I uh, pull it. Hmm. Okay. Noticing something I'll have to take and keep in mind for the next video. Definitely getting some weird contradictions here. Alright. Uh, straight paint, no water. Rub most of that out on the paper towel so it look like there's nothing left. And then lightly dusty gray to be effective. I'm actually going to start with the pants here. This, I think this is a brush might have about had it. It's feeling very uh, loose here. I'm refreshing my paint as needed. Get that wire. And the uh, binding on the arm. A little more on the pants. I want to make sure I'm going against these raised edges on the fly and the wrinkles. I'm going to go over the crab claw here. I'm going to go all the way up the arm. I think a little of this around the face and that shoulder where there's that gap. Highlight zero nine zero four five. Rats. All right, I am just gonna have to keep playing around with lighting and background color till I get this right, and that's all there is to it. Picked 
adjusting going against new raised areas. Dealing with the most readily accessible areas primarily. I'm going to worry too much about things that are uh, undercut or in shadow. Highlight zero nine one six five. I just realized I forgot to do the uh, hose going to the rebreather. I'll have to take care of that in a minute. Ivory 0944. Oh boy, I am butchering my names on paints tonight. I'll just finish up the rocks on the base real quick here. This is really frustrating. And then Adamantium Black 09124. This is a metallic black. I'm going to use this on the chaos icon and pale through his body. That's, I need to find a right tool for the job here. still see enough of that rust color showing through. And now true silver zero nine two zero seven. Misty gray on that uh, 
canister on his uh, belt. I forgot I did it in a thing called a rock. Let's just brush that a bit. And now back to the steel. And the belt buckle. And the big one's going to be the mall here. A little too much paint there. I want to shine this up a bit, but I want to completely obscure the rust either. Okay. That's it for the painting on the model. The focus issue had turned out as good as the paint job. Now I'm going back into matte black again. Before I put any talus on the base, which is rock debris, I'm going to uh, take a flat headed brush. Here's my favorite. And I'm using the same amount of water as a base coat, which is just enough to thin the paint. I'm just going to line the edge here. Real careful where the toes come close to it. <laughs> Just carefully. Not much in the way of spillover at all, but this is what would cover that up. This is just an arbitrary color choice. So I need to let that dry completely. And I can add some basic material. Okay, trying to get some basic material on here. I'm trying the white background again. I don't know how well it's going to look. Let's see. But convenient container, white glue. I think this bottle's about shut. I'll have to replace it. It's all right. Water. Get it mixed up. Don't use your best best brush for this. Use something that's essentially going to be a sacrifice. Give it a dip in my basic material, which is a mix of fine and coarse uh, towels or rock debris. So, clean up the edge, and then I'm going to take a spare brush that's dry and just push this away from areas I don't want it. set for a bit, at least 20 minutes, 30 typically, so just to set for a bit, then I can uh, seal it. So back in a minute. All right, time to wrap up. Scenic Cement. This is a Woodland Scenics product. eyedropper and carefully dripping this into the talus. If you don't give this time to set first, then it, this will just push uh, your material around. 
but this will also, uh, now that it's had a chance to say, give it a rock hard finish when it dries. So, cleaning out my eyedropper. And that is it. The Chaos Ogryn from the Trainer Command expansion to Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. Uh, more experiments? I don't know how well they succeed. Oh, boy, I can't speak today. I don't know how well my experiment succeeded. Up next, a model from a game I have never done before, so uh, until then, I am Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, signing out.